Seattle Seahawks have their full list of undrafted free agents for 2024, as well as some additional rookie camp invites. On today's show, I will give you my grade for the Seahawks UDFAs, and we're also going to profile a couple of uh, UDFAs to watch that have the best chance of making the 53-man roster. We'll go over those in just a matter of moments. Before we do, I want to know, 12s, I'm very curious. What do you love most about your Seattle Seahawks? When you wake up in the morning and you say to yourself, I'm so proud to be a member of the 12s and I love the Seattle Seahawks, what gets you going every day for your love of the Seattle Seahawks? I want to know what that is. Does it have to do with your family? Is it a player? Is it from being... From Seattle, let me know what it is in the comment section. We'll get started with today's show. Here's the full list of UDFAs. Uh, let's start with Chevin Cordero, the quarterback from San Jose State. Uh, he was the Mountain West first-team all-quarterback uh, this past season. Also uh, set several records in the Mountain West Conference as well. He'll be the QB3 for Seattle for now. Meanwhile, George Holani, the running back from Boise State. More on him coming up in just a bit. An intriguing prospect for the Seahawks. Another running back is Tamaric Williams from North Dakota State, who previously played for SMU before going to NDSU. Well, Hayden Hatton, a wide receiver from Idaho, is staying around in the Pacific Northwest, going from Moscow to Seattle. You always do, always want to do what you can to get away from Moscow, right? Maybe the most exciting prospect the Seahawks signed, that is Jack Westover, tied in from the University of Washington, was a part of the Huskies offense, playing a significant role in helping them reach the college football playoff national championship game and uh, on that offense alongside Michael Penix Jr. and company. Uh, very explosive. He's worked with Ryan Grubb and Scott Huff a lot. We'll talk more about Westover coming up later on. Garrett Greenfield, offensive lineman from the University of South Dakota, also on this list, as is Xavier Delgado. That's a fun name to say. Offensive lineman from the University of Missouri. They call him Dirk, and for good reason. One of my personal favorites on this list. Mike Nowitzki from the University of Kansas, also on the UDFA signings. He was a second-team All-Big 12 selection in 2022. And on top of that, it's somebody that has a good track record as both a pass and run blocker, was the Jayhawks starting center the last two seasons. I think he's got a real shot to make the final roster when it's all said and done. The, I think, best player the Seahawks signed, without question, is Nelson Caesar, edge rusher from Houston. Our own Tom Downey had a fourth-round grade on this guy. And he ended up as a UDFA. The Seahawks with tremendous value, and they could certainly use help when it comes to edge rushers. Watch out for him. We'll talk about him coming up later on. Richard Gibinor, edge rusher from Troy, also makes the list, as does Sandita Anderson, edge rusher from Grambling University, and Devere Levelston, defensive tackle from SMU, also on the list. Another defensive tackle is Rasson Williams the second from Louisiana Tech. Aaron Beasley, defensive tackle from the University of Tennessee. And Easton Gibbs, defensive tackle from Wyoming. So a lot of con competition among the D-tackles there. Wrapping up the UDFAs, it includes Carlton Johnson, corner from Fresno State. D. Williams, defensive back from Tennessee. I will not make a D's nuts joke there. Uh, and Ro Torrance, defensive back from Arizona State, also on this list. And then the rookie minicamp invites, a late invite by the Seahawks, came in at the 11th hour as they were able to invite, we talked about this on the program earlier this week, the brother of Dolphins quarterback Tua Tungaviola, Talia Tungaviola of the University of Maryland, two-time All-Big Ten second-team selection and the Big Ten Conference's all-time leader, in uh, passing yards and completion percentage. DeCarrion Joyner, wide receiver from South Carolina, and uh, also Devin Richardson, linebacker from Washington State. And then a couple more for you as well. Uh, Travian Brown, linebacker from Arizona State, and Kadarian Ray, safety from the University of Tulsa, and Sam Lockett, 
safety from Washington State. So that is the full list of UDFAs and rookie minicamp invites. I'll give you my grade in a second, but want to hear your grade first. How would you grade the Seahawks UDFA class? A, B, C, D, or F? Let us know in the comment section below. Folks, we are closing in on 52,000 subscribers here on Seahawks today, less than 150 away from reaching that next milestone. For the latest happenings in your favorite team all offseason long, doesn't matter if the draft is over. We're not slowing down here. We're talking rookie mini camps, OTAs, training camp, everything and more. It's all covered. Anytime the Seahawks make a move, we'll make a video as quick as we can here on the channel. If you're a real, real member of the 12s, you got to be subscribed to Seahawks today. Subscribe now for free, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. My grade is a B plus. I think there's a couple players, actually, that have a decent chance to make this roster. And that's the ultimate goal, is that you want to see if you can find a diamond in the rut or two, like a Jake Bobo, for example, or a Doug Baldwin of the world. If you can hit on one or two of those, you're feeling great about that. I think you have a couple potential opportunities. I go B+, because I would have liked to see more quarterbacks involved uh, just to see what's out there potentially. But nonetheless, uh, the folks at NFL.com think the Seahawks did a pretty good job with this group as the Seahawks picked up not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. I'm not going to go the rest of the LeBron round. Uh, six total players in NFL.com's Best underrated, uh, best undrafted, rather, free agents for 2024. So here is the UDFAs that I think you should be watching out for. Let's start off with Jack Westover, the tight end from the University of Washington Huskies, a fluid mover with the football, folks. He, uh, he's got the hips that don't lie, right? Shout out Shakira. Very athletic. He is a clean pass catcher, uh, also useful as a blocker, but he does have short arms and a short wingspan, so that could hold him back potentially, as size does matter. We'll see what that does. We mentioned the role he had on this Husky offense this past season, 46 catches, 433 yards, and you have to take into account, too, his role that he had that Husky uh, offense. They had so many weapons, right? When you talked about Odunze and Polk uh, and company, I mean, all those guys that, you know, Dylan Johnson, uh, so many guys to choose from. Westover still managed to be involved in that group with 433 yards receiving. I think it's actually pretty solid. Brock Heward. I love Brock Heward. Uh, former Huskies quarterback. Also spent some time with the Seahawks. Been covering uh, both teams for a long time. Just a great job calling college football games and Fox as well. He knows the uh, Seahawks and Huskies as well as anybody. He had this to say about the addition. Westover is an unbelievable natural pass catcher. He's going to be a better pass catcher than Pharaoh Brown, who's currently the Seahawks' number two tight end, by the way. A.J. is good at it, but I think Westover's skill set and his hands are even better than that. So you're giving him an opportunity with no offense to maybe be that real pass-catching threat. And they've kept four-plus tight ends around here on the roster in previous years. So I would think Westover went into the exact right fit with background, people that believe in him, and what cool opportunity just to go down the road. That's the thing. Brock's absolutely right about this. The Seahawks don't have right now – that second option of a true pass-catching tight end. And Westover, I think, has got a chance to be that guy and could work his way up to be the Seahawks' number two tight end when it's all said and done. What do you think? This is Jackie? Jackie. Corn dogs, Jackie. Corn dogs for all these people. Does Jackie make the 53-man roster for the Seahawks? Type Y for yes, in for no. Way in the comments section. Let us know what you think. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the place to go for daily fantasy made easy. Here's how it works. Choose two or more players on any given category. Get the choice of more or less, whether you are talking fantasy points in basketball, maybe it's goals in hockey, birdies in golf. Maybe you're already looking ahead to the start of the NFL season. Well, we got you covered there, too. We got DK to have more than 1,025.5 receiving yards. Got Lamar to have more than... 3,600.5 passing yards. If I put $20 down, both those hit, 
That's going to turn into $60 on prize picks, folks. Did I stutter? No, I did not stutter. Download prize picks today. Get $100 off your first deposit when you use the promo code CLNS. That's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Promo code CLNS. The link is in the comments and the description of today's video. All right. Let's talk about Nelson Caesar now. Um, when you got a name like Caesar, you're you're definitely going to be a powerful force, right? I, I would not want to mess with this guy. I mean, uh, ha- have you seen you know Caesar's Palace? I mean, it's no joke. Uh, Nelson Caesar, a pass rush specialist. Uh, he's agile with his movement skills. A good motor for coverage sacks. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Who, who, who sings that? Um, I can't remember. Uh, below average bend. Um, he does struggle against the run. So if you're looking for a comp, kind of like a Daryl Taylor type, if you will. He can get after the quarterback, but eh, not great at everybody else. But we'll take what we can get as a UDFA at this point, right? Nine and a half sacks with the Houston Cougars last season. Thirteen and a half tackles for loss and 43 tackles, a very good year for him. And he made that transition to the Big 12 Conference from the American, and he did not struggle at all playing against better competition in the Big 12. He impressed mightily there uh, with Houston. The last name to watch out for is George Holani, the running back from Boise State, from the Boise State Broncos, as uh, he makes the short trip from Boise to Seattle. That's a quick flight. Uh, the scattered report on him, very crisp with one-cut footwork. He's capable of absorbing contact. He's re- got reliable hands as a pass catcher, so might be a role potentially as a third down back as far as that goes. Struggles to elude tacklers at times, and he does lack the juice to rip the line of scrimmage. So the juice ain't getting loose uh, when it comes to George Holani, but got the good pass catching skills. Uh, and that one cut, so that'll be something to watch for there. His best season was back in 2022 when he rushed for over 1,100 yards, had 1,157 yards, 10 touchdowns. Last year, did not play the full season, but was still solid uh, in the eight games he did play with 748 yards, uh, about 5.6 yards per carry, and seven touchdowns. So watch out for George Holani to potentially have a shot to be that number four running back on the Seahawks roster uh, there behind Kenny McIntosh. Who was your favorite Seahawks UDFA signing of all the players that they brought in that we talked about in today's show? Who was it? Weigh in in the comment section. Let me know who that was. Give me a follow on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Tyler Jones Live. Elon took away my check mark, but I promise it's still me. Give me a follow there. I'll see you next time here on Seahawks. 